Howdy and welcome to the special episode in our Wedgefoot series. I'm Norman from Future Student University and in this video we will tackle two new questions. A lot of the feedback we get is, hey, in our year Wedgefoot series you always work with Android apps and you always work with JSON APIs. Because there's also Wedgefoot for regular Java projects and there's also XML APIs. So why don't you look at those? So in this video, we will tackle both of them. So welcome to a slightly different IDE because we are in IntelliJ instead of Android Studio. But I've already prepared um, the basics. So I've added um, Retrofit and the XML converter to our project and it's available. So what we now need to do is actually implement Retrofit in this regular Java project and then um, interact with an XML file. So actually the base project or the base uh, system is the exact same. So we're going to start with the, um, start with the Redford Builder. And we're not going to use the base you are all actually, but we have to um, set one, otherwise Retrofit will be complaining. So let's just say we're going to use local 3000, even though it doesn't matter. And let's format this a little nicer. And let's add some missing dot. No, I guess if we build it uh, Now, if you want to use XML, um, an XML controller, you need to add it as a factory. And what we're going to use is the simple XML um, controller. And we're going to use the factory, just like we would have um, done with JSON. So we have our Redfoot um, object, and now we could start describing the endpoint we want to talk to. So let's create an interface. And then that interface in um, this example will be uh, just a GitHub gist we will talk to. So let's call this GitHub gist, um, let's say service. It will be a get request. And that URL I have to copy and paste because it's a really long one. And let's just say it's going to be a response body for now as the, as the response of the server. Let's call this, let's get GitHub gist. And I guess up here is missing a little thing. All right, so we have the interface. So now we could do that for create. That is not what I want. Because we are missing the class right here. Now let's try this again. Mm, just so it should be enough. And now we can access a method. Now we are in a regular Java project, so we can actually use the synchronous way of doing it. If you're confused by any of that, I've linked all the relevant videos um, in the description below from describing endpoints to um, executing methods synchronously. Now we do have to do this uh, try catch around it. Um, this will have a result, Let's say response. And yeah, let's do system print. System out. All right, and that's actually it. This should be a regular request. 
Um, we're making the request uh, to this URL and we're going to get the content of that URL. And then um, once we're done, we will send this uh, request on. So let's execute this and see what happens. All right, so the request is done. Um, we successfully made our first request in a regular Java project with Retrofit, um, but the actual content of this video is supposed to be how can we automatically convert um, from an XML file to uh, Java objects. Because if you open the URL, it will be an XML file. And the XML file world here is actually a task. So let's create a class that represents this XML file. Oh, let's make it a class task. And that will have three properties. Uh, let's say, let me look up what we all have here. Okay, so we have a... We have an ID, we have a title, we have language of the task, and well, let's add a description too. For everyone who has watched the JSON videos, you know that would be enough for JSON. You don't need to have any special annotations. You can add them if you um, want to customize the conversion, but you don't need to. With simple XML, unfortunately, you don't have that option. You always have to um, tell exactly what that um, XML file is going to be um, describe this. So what you have to do is you're going to have to add a root annotation. Here you're going to have to describe it as a name. And our XML um, will have the name task. And now you have to do that for every uh, single property. Just now it's not the root element, it's just an element. And you're going to say name is ID. And we will have that for all four properties. Obviously, the name isn't ID, it's language, it's description, and it's tile. And that's it for describing the or preparing the class for an automatic mapping. So what we now can do is we can change the return type of that method to a task. And now we have to change this down here. And what that means is we can access the response body and it's a tasks. So now we have a task object if everything works well. So let me try this. All right, so the task response is not found. Okay, let me check what's up here. So I copy pasted the L, but it actually was the wrong one because we want to access a specific file. And let's try this again. All right, so now we see up here we have a 200 response. So the request was successful. Um, we do also have a response. And as you can see, it automatically mapped the content of that XML file to our Java object. So it sets the ID, it sets the title, the description, and the language. And that's it. So as you can see, doing retrofit requests on a regular Java project is no problem. Doing automatic conversion of XML files to um, with retrofit is also no problem. That's really everything I have for you in this video. If you've learned something and you want to see more retrofit videos, maybe even for the regular Java projects on the server side, let me know. Like this video to give me a small signal or comment below. 
Subscribe for future videos. Enjoy coding, make it rock, and peace out.